welcome back to your Rich Haven Homestead, Off-Grid Living, and so much more. Today I want to share something that our family enjoys. Almost every Sunday we make pancakes or waffles or both. And since I cook vegan, we like to top our pancakes or waffles with this delicious coconut whipped cream. There's lots of ways to make vegan whipped cream, but this one happens to be our current favorite. We've made many over the years, and I have lots of different recipes that I really, really like. But this one just happens to be the quickest and easiest one. Everybody in the household can make it. Sometimes it's my husband, sometimes it's myself, one of the two boys, or Austin when he comes. It's so easy. So let me show you how to make this and let me show you what ingredients it takes. First, let me give you a close up. It whips up smooth and thick and delicious. Okay, all you're gonna need for the vegan whipped cream, and this is how it turns out when it gets whipped. It holds its shape nicely. Now this is after it's been in the refrigerator. So when you first blend it, it's going to be slightly softer, but that's okay, it'll firm up. So the key ingredient for this recipe is, well, this happens to be organic, but coconut milk. If you can find the coconut milk that has the most fat in it, you're gonna do better with your vegan whipped cream. This brand, which I have no affiliation with, Wild Harvest, we have been getting from our local co-op for the last oh, six months or so because this stuff is the bomb. It's almost entirely fat. Um, you know, this is not a low calorie food, but the, the fatty coconut milk really helps to keep the whipped cream's shape. So look for a coconut milk that, um, is just a few ingredients. It should be coconut, possibly water and maybe guar gum, but I've tried many coconut milks over the years and some of them are very juicy and, and thin. I would not recommend the light coconut milk for this recipe, simply because you want the fat of the coconut cream to have the body of the whipped cream. One tip that I would, that I would recommend is store your coconut milk before you make the whipped cream in the refrigerator. That way the, it will get really cold and you know, plant, fats will solidify more at a colder temperature. So if you keep it in the refrigerator at least overnight or a few hours, it will make it a lot easier. So you want the coconut milk, maple syrup, or honey, or your favorite brand of sweetener. I like to use stevia so that I, have, that I can use less maple syrup, vanilla, I'm almost out of vanilla. Salt and optionally cream of tartar. I'm gonna tell you about why in a minute. Okay, that's all you need. So what you wanna do is, I'll include the recipe in the description so you can just have it. And I will also put it on my blog so that you can print it out. It'll be a lot easier that way. But let's get to it. The first step is obviously opening your can of coconut milk. And if you've kept it in the refrigerator, then this process will be easier as far as taking it out. So open your can and then you wanna scoop out your coconut cream into a bowl. Okay, here's where your refrigerated coconut milk will show what it's gonna do. You want to only scoop the cream part, the solid part of your coconut milk. And this brand, almost all of the cans that we get, they're cream all the way down to the bottom, but that's not usual. Usual coconut milk that you get at the store has maybe half, maybe more, just depends on the brand and how, what the coconuts were like that day when they made it. So you wanna carefully scoop the 
the coconut cream into your bowl. Just go down until you start getting liquid and then leave the liquid. You can use it for any other thing. You can use it for smoothies or whatever you'd like. If you can see, I've already scooped most of this out and I still have a good bit of cream at the bottom. So I'm just gonna scoop and as it turns out, there is really no water on the bottom of this. And I did not refrigerate this. This is just on the shelf. So like I said, this brand we love because it's so easy to work with. But most brands, you're gonna have some coconut water at the bottom and you're gonna save that or you're gonna drink it and it's delicious. I like to scrape the cream off the top of my lid so I'm not wasting anything. Now you wanna add your other ingredients. You may hate me for this, but this is kind of how I cook. This is one of these recipes that you are going to adjust according to your family's preferences. So depending on how sweet you want it, you're gonna adjust it. And so I would recommend adding about two tablespoons of maple syrup, but you can add up to a quarter of a cup if you want. And it, that it just depends on how you like it when my boys make it they make it a lot sweeter than i do and probably when greg makes it too so you may go higher two three four tablespoons is what you might do so start with that and then adjust according to what you think i like to add a pinch of salt this happens to be himalayan pink salt but any kind you have just a little pinch It just kind of makes everything even out. Okay, the next ingredient that I like to add when I make it is Stevia. Now this is the brand I've told you before that we use. It's from CC Nature and it comes from Amazon. And I just get it because several reasons. It's cheaper per pound than some of the other ones. It does not have a bitter taste and it's, yeah, pretty smooth. A lot of the stevias are pretty awful. <laughs> They're pretty bitter. And so what I do here is I add, it's very, stevia is a very concentrated sweetener. So this is an eighth of a teaspoon of stevia. That's gonna be plenty for this recipe. But if it's not, and let's say you are a diabetic, let's say that you don't wanna use any kind of of maple syrup or honey or sugar, use all stevia. Normally, I try to balance stevia with a little bit of sweetener because for some reason it works better. Stevia is one of those natural sweeteners, but it can it can give a funny taste. And I find that when I mix it with another sweetener, it just seems to kind of mask that. But I've made it entirely with stevia and that's, that's actually how I make it for myself. When I make it for my family, they do like the maple syrup and so maybe a little bit sweeter for them. Next thing, we've got the stevia, maple syrup, salt. We're gonna add a little bit of vanilla. I would say a half a teaspoon and this is three quarters, so I'm gonna use a bit less. Now my, my vanilla is very concentrated. It's like double concentrated. And so, yeah. It's also almost gone. It says use one quarter to one half of what your recipe calls for. I get this at Yoder's, which is the bulk store down the road. And I just wanna say something about vanilla. Buy good vanilla if you can afford it. Now, if you can afford it, because vanilla is one of those really expensive foods, but if you don't buy natural vanilla, you're getting artificial. Okay, so artificial I don't like, but look it up how they get artificial vanilla flavoring and you may or may not decide to eat it again. So this one actually, I just noticed this yesterday or this morning that this has vanilla flavoring and natural vanilla. So I'm probably not gonna buy this one again. I'm gonna have to splurge for the other one or I'm gonna make my own with vanilla bean and some type of alcohol that I soak it, but it takes a long time, like months. Anyway, I'll give you a hint. They make imitation vanilla flavoring from 
badgers and beavers castoreum glands, which is one of their private parts. And to me, that's pretty disgusting. Yuck. Okay. The last ingredient after all that is optional. And I don't always add this. In fact, I only rarely add this. I add this when I want it to be stabilized, like if I'm gonna put it on a cake or if I wanna store it for a little while. You don't really need this 100%, but it can help. So this is cream of tartar. And I, I just add like, a, not even a quarter of a teaspoon, just, I mean, just kind of a, maybe a scant quarter teaspoon because it does have a little bit of a flavor to it. But I, I would add that to help it stay whipped. Just helps a little bit. Now your coconut milks usually have guar gum in them, which helps them to stay stabilized anyway. So it's very, it's very optional about the cream of tartar. It's just one trick that I learned a while back. If you're whipping it, it helps it to stay whipped. The one that I took out of the refrigerator is very nice and whipped and it stayed whipped. It didn't get all hard. Here's what it looks like. It's just a little collection of flavorings in a bowl. The next step is whip it. We're making whipped cream after all. Okay, there's several ways you can do this. You can use a regular whisk, no problem. It works, you'll just be whipping a while. You can use a, a mixer with your egg beaters and that works pretty well. You can use a mixer with a whisk on it, which is what I'm doing today. Just, I found out that I like that version, but most of the time I use two egg beaters and it almost is the same thing. You just wanna whip this until it is a consistency that you like it. And so the more you whip, the more fluffy it's gonna get. I like to start out slow and work my way up. You can also put this in your stand mixer, it works perfectly well, but I just, I like the hand mixer because you can use such a small little bowl to do it. This is how it came out when I whipped it. Now, if you notice, let, let me show you the, the comparison between the two. Okay, this is the whipped topping that I just whipped up. And it is softer, but still whipped. It's pretty airy, but it is softer because it has not been refrigerated. This one here is thicker. It's made the same way. This one just happened to be refrigerated from leftover from our waffles. So there you have it. It's super easy to make, delicious. This is one of those things that you can wow your family and they will love it. We like to eat ours with frozen berries with our waffles and the whipped cream on top. And it's pretty, pretty yummy. We just, one of our favorite things to eat. So I hope that you are encouraged that vegan cooking can be pretty easy. I will say one more thing that this topping, I, when I bake a cake, this is a lot of times what I use to ice the cake. It does very well. It stays nice and whipped. It's nice and light and fluffy, and most people like it. I've been, I've made cakes and taken them to places and I've gotten interrogated, like, what'd you do? How'd you make this? And the moment I say I made a vegan whipped cream, they're like, oh, we don't like that. But they had been eating it the whole time. Oh, this is delicious, delicious, we love it. What'd you do? And I'm like, it's coconut cream. Oh, we don't like that. So sometimes you're a little bit prejudiced. If it's just because it's vegan doesn't mean that it has to taste bad. A lot of times vegan tastes really good. And I mean, obviously we've been eating, I've been eating vegan for probably 25 years. So let's give it a try, see how it is. Well, thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoy the vegan whipped cream. I hope you subscribe and stick around because every now and then I'll share a recipe of things that we actually make on our homestead. A lot of times it's DIY stuff that we're sharing, um, what we're doing around the homestead, gardening, but I like to be in my kitchen and now that I'm actually able to 
live in our cabin. It's a wonderful thing. And so I hope to be able to share more plant-based recipes with you in the future.